chances are that's not working anymore. I bought a set of brake line wrenches. So the reason they're really good is that they've got the hex similar to a normal one, but with a line in the middle. So that means you can actually slip it on to the, like the, the nut of the brake line nipple and properly get there and, and twist it off because they're really soft. Just using this is uh, a really good way of rounding it out. And obviously if it's a closed circle like that, you can't actually get it over the line. So they are a handy investment. So fingers crossed, I can get this one to come off a little bit easier than that. Ah, oh, perfect. So I had one seize really badly in this one here. There's no way that's coming off and you can see it's starting to round a bit there. And that's because I attacked it with a number of different tools before I uh, succumbed and bought this kit here. Welcome to your new home. Let me show you around. So bear with me. We literally bought this motorhome two days ago, so we're very unfamiliar with everything. But basically, big bed here where Chris will be sleeping. Another little couch that turns into another bed, which very likely me and Oakley will sleep in. We won't be using the motorhome as a vehicle. What? Touching the door. <laughs> here we go. So I was saying, we won't be using the motorhome as an actual vehicle, that would be just like a base, like almost like a caravan. The reason why we chose as well the motorhome and not a caravan, so not only most caravans in our price range didn't have a shower, and as well, we didn't really want to have to tow. It's a bit inconvenient, that was quite easy to bring back the motorhome on the highway together as a little convoy with Chris, so yeah, that worked out quite well for that. We've got gas cooking which we're not too sure if we're gonna keep or not because we want to have induction in the volvo so maybe we'll buy the induction already we've got a sink and on this side we've got another seating arrangement which will be i guess quite convenient because we can do we can eat here i can do some editing while ugly naps like the layout of the actual motorhome is quite cool it's super vintage it's not a big deal it's at least we've got a roof above our head which is the most important part right now we've got as well a bathroom hello <laughs> so as you can see very old school bathroom learning how the cassette toilet works we at this stage can't fill up the tank so yeah we have to work things out with getting familiar with the, the space. One thing that I really like is the tons of storage which is quite handy because we've got a lot of things that we brought from Australia. So yeah, this is what it looks like at the moment. I'm gonna go to Ikea today with Oaks, buy a bunch of things, maybe start to clean and like decorate and make it a bit more like a home. We've got an Airbnb still for the next four nights so I can take my time at least to uh, get this sorted. I'm coming into some unforeseen difficulties, like just basic stuff, like I need a, a penetrant, something like WD-40 or Shift You Bastard that I really like. So I found this one called Roslosning, and then at the bottom it's got Roslosner with a picture of a bolt, so I assumed this is the stuff. And I bought a couple of cans of it and it seems to be working really, really well. Smells a bit like WD-40 too, so I'm pretty sure this is a penetrant. That's helped a lot with the brake lines. Now, I've, so I've undone both those brake lines. The front is peculiar in that it has uh, two of the brake cylinders for these pads here. So it's a little bit of a different drum brake setup on the front. So this is obviously the first time I'm looking at it. There's a bunch of 18 millimeter nuts on the back of this hub. So in order to pull the whole assembly off with the main portal gear, I need to get those off and there's not enough room for the Ugga Duggars. So I'm going for the tried and true method of spanner and brute force ignorance. There we go, like so. And that is working pretty well. So I'm going to get all of those bolts off and then pull the hub off. I had to get creative with a few ways of getting those nuts off. They're much more seized in the other than the rear ones. I don't know why. One good trick was get an extender and then you can actually hold the wrench like that and pull on it and that was a really good way to get more leverage rather than like that little bit there. So it worked well. Uh, looks like uh, whoever's repaired this last has siliconed it up 
which the other ones hadn't, so I would say it's going to be a lot harder to get off. And what do you know, I actually forgot to drain the hub oil. Smooth. Very nice. But yeah, we got the hub off. Woo! Okay, next step is getting this big nut off here. And you can see it's been peened in as well. So I need to get a flat blade screwdriver, bust that little dent in it, and then I can use the rattle gun to take that straight off. Then I can use the big gear puller here to remove the large gear and that'll give me access to this and to that the rest will come off and uh, come apart I got tricked because the first nut on the first uh, axle was a 36 so I went out and bought a 36 mil socket for the rattle gun so far the other two are pulled apart are a uh, 46 which is huge. So luckily Bjorn had one in his tool cabinet in the main workshop. It's not very delicate. Not much finesse is involved really. Okay, that actually worked okay. So as you can see, I've kind of bent this part out. So now it doesn't lock so much. And now it's time for the rattle gun again. So I bought a converter that goes half inch, which is the rattle gun, to three quarter inch, which is the huge nut. Yeah, that's gonna do it. Perfect. And there's that giant nut off. Then under here we have, hmm, this has been sealed as well. Someone's gone to town with uh, silicon on this. Made that O-ring toast. So I'm gonna have to buy six of these O-rings. All right, so that is off and that gives me access to being able to pull the gear off. So I'll set up the big puller and hopefully it's not too stuck down there. That's one awesome thing about Buildtema, is it's got specialist tools like this, just off the shelf, which I could be mistaken, but you don't really get that in Australia. This would be a special order of some kind, I would imagine. Or at least it wouldn't be at your super cheap auto or your Repco, that's for sure. This isn't actually my puller, I'm borrowing it, but it's from Buildtema. Line her up. Now, as you can see, this is pulling it off just by hand. So this was not on tight at all. Very loose. The first one took a huge amount of force. This one, very easy. And there's my big gear. And the actual roller bearing Looks really good, which is nice to see. All the others did as well. I'm not going to replace those roller bearings. There's just no need. And this is filled with grease here. So there's my seal and my sealing ring here, which I need to learn how to get out properly. Bam. There's the little, I guess you could call it a stub axle. Correct me if I'm wrong, let's call that a stub axle from now on. And that has given me access to the drum brakes. Different types of springs on this front one. I guess because it's that dual piston setup. So I'll take a photo of that so that I know what it looks like for putting it back together. I've memorized the rears, but I'll need to memorize this one as well. All right, it is Sunday morning, back into the workshop. 
So I'm now working on the front drum brakes. So they're a, a double brake, so they're pretty much twice the size as the ones on the rear, which is cool. But they have these additional springs here, which I have no idea where they came from. The other ones, all of the springs come off a Series 2 Land Rover, so I've got replacements for these rear ones. But uh, I guess it's a non-standard feature because the drums that I've got don't have the holes for these additional springs, so I've just drilled them now. We've partnered with Ryobi on the build, which we're super, super chuffed with. So we've got a lot of awesome Ryobi power tools. The drill already coming in handy, and it's a beast, because I'm just using hammer driver just to slam through it. But I have really cheap bits that I brought over from Australia, and they're really big fans of snapping. Actually, I think I got these from Aldi, so that's probably why they're not so good. So I'll need to invest in some better drill bits. Uh, I'll keep firing away at this and then I'll start pulling the drum apart and see if I can work out these brake cylinders and kind of go from there. I've noticed the work lamp behind is flickering so the refresh rate must be similar to the GoPro so apologies for that but I don't really have a solution for it at this stage. Hopefully it's bearable. I'm just using some of that multi-spray as a cutting fluid and that's working quite well. Those are drilled. Now I've got to pull these off somehow. So let's get a screwdriver. There's one. So they're pretty old springs, but they actually still look like they're in decent condition. Like they're not too bent, they've still got some flex to them. but they're still definitely toast. They're not working anymore, those cylinders. You should be able to push those in and out really easily, and they make like a whoosh ear noise. Got a spring inside, but they are completely toast. Yeah, and they've been all leaking, those cylinders. So there's the, the culprit. So they've just got a couple of nuts on the rear. I don't know what they are, they're like a, a 12 or a 13. So I'll pop those off and then Give that a little bit of a clean with a wire brush and maybe the drill and stuff. Clean in there and then I can start putting the other ones back on. Now before I clean this hub up and try and put the new brakes on, I'm actually going to press this piece out here, which is the part I need to replace the seals on. I don't know the technical name of that. Uh, I don't have anything quite perfect enough to push this out, but I've got a couple of pieces of wood from an old pallet that was broken that I've grabbed and that's given me the clearance to be able to remove this piece. So this uh, jack is already coming in massively handy. Okay, and there it is there. With the wear ring on either side and the seals that need to be replaced once I learn how to do it. So this morning I did some shopping with Oakley. We went to IKEA to buy a lot of things for the motorhome and my mission right now is to organize a little bit what we've got because we might be moving in here the next two or three nights. We've extended the Airbnb. Luckily the host are amazing so they uh, made us like a good deal to extend. That give us time to work out the water, electricity, gas situation in here. But yeah, this is one step, fitted shit on. I'm gonna open everything else. And let me introduce you to the star of the show. Okay, boy. Are you gonna help mama to open up the duvet? Do you want to see your new bed? <laughs> All right, should we open the new duvet? So it's a bit tricky with the sizing. <laughs> Oh, this <laughs> There were so many options at Ikea, it was a bit overwhelming. <laughs> you like it? Let's see. We'll put 
the duvet cover. That is normally Chris' job. If there's one thing in terms of household chores that I hate doing, is changing the sheets. Don't ask me why. Since we started traveling back in the rooftop tent with the Jeep, hated it. Who else is like me and struggles? I feel like this is the ultimate task I need to be able to complete in my life before becoming a mom. And then that day I will be ready. A little bit more to it than that. <laughs> and since then, yeah, Chris is um, the one doing it usually. But today, Chris is busy with much more important task. So I've got my assistant, <laughs> or not. Judging by a look on his face, he's actually gonna not help me at all. <laughs> you think it's a game, isn't it? <gasps> Oakley has been doing pretty good the past days, but before that, he had a bit of trouble adapting. As you can see, don't judge me, he's got no socks. He's got a face yeah. where he hates socks, hates shoes, hates clothes so we're doing what we can putting the heating in the car so it was nice and toasty and hopefully it will be nice and toasty here as well we've got electric heating <laughs> all right let's put the sheets on okay putting the drum brake springs on now so put the two cylinders on that was pretty easy but this part is not so easy i got one on took me ages but i guess it's just working out what the technique is I think a lot of people cut a notch in a flat bladed screwdriver and use that to help, but uh, yeah, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm gonna try a different way. So, this is the hard one, but let's see if we can. Pretty thankless job doing these brakes, I must say. No, is that an easier way? Don't tell me that's the easier way. Oh, well, it might be. Oh, that's the way easier way! Yes! Gosh, that took a bit of, bit of manhandling though. <laughs> okay, now the other springs, the dirty, dirty old ones, these go in the new holes that I drilled. So that one goes, yeah, yeah. Okay, here we go. Oh, that spring's much easier. We're actually getting somewhere. It's easier, bam. We get a 13 on the adjuster. There we go. That fit in. This one doesn't actually, oh. So this has a little key. Adjuster needs to be able to contact. I didn't realize I've put it upside down. So it turns out this is the shoe that I need. Cool, so that means I've got to pull those springs off again. Oh well, it'll be my workout for the day. I keep learning as I go, but man, this is slowing me down. So many mistakes that I'm making, silly mistakes. I should have figured that one out. Oh well, it is what it is. All right, the brake drums are set, so now I need to learn how to take this front hub apart. So I'll probably start with the steering linkage, so probably that one there, and then maybe this top kingpin and the bottom kingpin, and that will hopefully do it. Oh, plus brake lines. So I'll get started on the brake lines first, actually, because they're a bit more delicate. All right, let's go. Oh, she's heavy. All right. There's the front with the damaged CV boot. So I'll show you why this is one of the more common 
repairs and I'll show you the replacement that I got. It's quite a bit different than this rubber one. So it should hopefully last longer. Quite a bit of oil in there and it looks good. Looks like uh, nice clean oil dripping out. So it's good to see. Shaft looks great. Shaft looks really good actually. Cool, so soon we'll be able to inspect the CV. And the reason for the repair is you can see it's all torn in the actual boot. I'll show you that clearer soon when I pull this whole thing out. Such a messy job. I've pulled the carrier apart. There's the other piece of the housing here. There is the dust cover or the CV boot. And there's a couple of places with like a finger sized hole in it. So what happens is rubbish like all this dirt and grot and water and stuff will get in here and it will destroy the seal. So that's why the CV boot is so important. This is my replacement here from Malaysia. Fancy, fancy, fancy. And that is a silicon boot. So it should last much, much longer than these natural rubber ones. It'll also be a little bit more flexible, which is a good thing as well. Okay, another day at the office and I've started the morning with cleaning up a bunch of these parts. I've cleaned a few outside. I'm using oven and grill cleaner and water and a metal scrubbing brush. It's taking a long time to get all the oil and grease off, especially off this front hub assembly. That took ages. Then I've filled an empty one of these with white spirits or just basically cleaning alcohol so it's not so toxic as degreaser and I can spray it on everything and then give it a good wipe. So everything is pretty much ready to be painted. This is the paint we're using, Brantho Corux 3-in-1. So this is a special industrial paint which is a anti-rust, a primer and a paint all-in-one. And it's quite thick, I'll show you. So that's it there. It wasn't cheap, but I've heard really good things about it. It's quite tacky. So I'm gonna give that a good stir and then start painting, uh, first of all the hub so that I can do the drum brake and then I'll paint the front hub as well so that I can start putting that back together and hopefully get the CV boot on today and get that CV joint all greased up. Just gotten the uh, shaft back into the CV joint. Now the CV joint itself looks absolutely perfect. So I'm, I almost, when I was in Oz, replaced both of them because I assumed that from seeing the leaks in the photos that they would be stuffed. But I think what's happened is the military has pumped so much grease into this thing through this point here, through that nipple, which sits into the carrier like that. They have pumped so much grease in there, I don't think any moisture or rubbish got in there. So it seems absolutely fine. It was just packed with grease. So I'm putting some grease in now. I went down to Biltmer again and got some drive nut grease. So that's for like your CV joints formulated for higher temperatures and kind of like harder use. So that's the more expensive of the greases. So definitely wanted to use that. There was a circlet on the shaft, so that's why I was sitting with the hammer, that circlet had to be compressed to be able to sit back into the CV joint and now it won't come out again. So uh, I've pre-greased it, now I'm ready to put some sealant around that edge there so that it locks the CV boot into place. And that's the job now. Okay, so I've put a gasket sealer on, which I bought from Biltmer as well. Not one that I've used before, but I'm sure it'll be okay, because this isn't a really important gasket to make. So it just kind of goes on with a brush, a bit like treacle. So I've put that around the boot itself and around this lip here. So it's got two mating surfaces. 
and just bear in mind as well I had to remove this copper ring from the old CV boot that didn't come with the replacement so I've put this copper sort of ceiling ring here that's where you can see uh, this mark here on the shaft and now I'm ready to put it over and then because this is nice and malleable it'll be easy to get the um, the other knuckle over afterwards so hopefully this is easy to do Awesome, that's nice and snug. Obviously that's not the right tool to use to put this on, but that worked fine. Just using the rubber mallet hasn't damaged the boot in the slightest. Very happy with that. This is kind of my first part of the rebuild that I've completed. Awesome. Now the knuckle, I'll put a little bit of sealant there and I'll also put a little bit of grease in here as well. Now I'm gonna put some grease around the seal pressure is on. Okay, so I'll let that dry a bit and I'm going to button it down as well so that it sits into place properly. And another trip to Ikea. So I just went to buy an extra warm duvet for Chris because unfortunately the one I bought myself was just a warm one and I think it's not going to be warm enough for the cold climate of Sweden. It feels quite thin actually and the motorhome obviously is not really well insulated. We've got a heater but yeah I'm not too sure that's going to be warm enough. So I'm a bit disappointed that IKEA wouldn't honor a refund on it because I'd ripped off the package. So luckily we've got our Nike puffy down blanket that just arrived so I'm super stoked because those are rated for five degrees so it should be nice and toasty hopefully in here and if you're not familiar with the Nike products we've got as well the hammocks the sentry towels and the picnic blanket they're all made of recycled plastic bottles and for every purchase Nike plants four trees this one I'm really looking forward to trying it it's very light and compact as well and if you're after as well one of the Nike products they do worldwide shipping so definitely check out their website all right, so I'm having my assistant Okri boy helping me to open the blanket. Do you like it? That's gonna be our blanket. You, <laughs> you. <laughs> it's a really good size. I think it's two meters by one point four meter wide from memory, so fits perfectly. All right, for us, time to go to the supermarket. As you can see, I'm really struggling with that ball joint. So I've sprayed the heck out of it. I've whacked it with the hammer a bunch of times. Nothing is seeming to budge it. So I would say that ball joint is toast because it's likely it's all rusted through. So 
yeah, might need to be replacing that one, unfortunately, if I can get it out of the arm. Now I can't pull this hub apart until I get that off. So instead I'll pull this part of the hub off. So I'll get in there now and have a crack at that. Let's get it done. Okay, so I got that steering knuckle off using this fancy, fancy machine. So this is a French made induction heater. So I'll pull that over here if you've not seen one of these before. So that works on magnetism, just like an induction cooktop, I guess. And you basically hold it onto a bolt and it will glow red hot. And then it kind of loosens everything up and enables you to bang it out. So that worked so well. He said this was like a 2000 euro machine or something, uh, really expensive. I'm now ready to pull the hub off. I'll show you these ball joints. They're a little bit more seized than I thought they were, unfortunately. So here's the one that you saw me having trouble with yesterday. That one will definitely get replaced, but I'm also thinking of replacing these two as well, because they're not really functioning as well as I'd like, but the one on the other end seems absolutely fine. So I think we need two ball joint replacements, unfortunately, but I can get those from a company called Tatanka here in Sweden. They've apparently got really good service. I haven't ordered off them yet, so I'm looking forward to that. Show you that so you might be able to see that hole right there so that is why this boot would need to be replaced no matter what whether I was doing the portal seals or not because like I said in the last one that'll let a whole bunch of moisture in and dirt and crud and stuff like that and eventually it'll destroy the CV joint which is a much more costly repair and more of a procedure to get out so good to do that now all right I'm gonna pull that over here but that's Coming along really nicely. After this one is done, we've got the two more rear wheels and then every hub is off. Good news, I'm going to this like military wrecker kind of place where he does old vehicles and exports them overseas. We're going there today with Bjorn uh, and hopefully I'll be able to, I don't know, maybe borrow tools or see how they do it to replace the seals in this and then I might be finally able to start actually finishing this project uh, for the actual hubs so excited about that so wish me luck So that little trip, it was about an hour drive each way. Don't exactly know where it was, but that was awesome. It was just basically these two big sheds filled with old ex-military hardware. It was a really cool experience. So Jürgen, the owner there, had two mechanics that were out of the military, retired from the Swedish army. He showed me exactly what to do with these seals, which was hugely invaluable and I can kind of see why I couldn't do it myself so he basically made himself just by finding bits of scrap from his knowledge for what would work this one this one this one and this one and these basically fit perfectly for doing the seals just on this one piece of the portal of course, the actual Volvo military had some specialist bits of hardware that they don't have access to anymore 
but yeah, that, he, he made it work. So I can really see now why I struggled so much. So they have very generously lent me these for a week, week and a half while I do all six of these seals and gave me some more information, had a really good chat with them. They were great guys. And I picked up some spare parts for the Volvo from Jurgen for a really good price, as well as some new uh, brake lines, soft brake lines for the front, which I'll show you at some point. So I'm still running copper nickel brake lines, but also some soft lines in certain places as well, where there's more flex on the vehicle. So very happy with that. And most of all, I got a new grill for the front because I really don't like having a bent grill. That's that famous Volvo TGB grill, so I really wanted it to be pristine. And I got the little Volvo insignia as well. So yeah, very happy with that trip. This one's now had the seals removed, so I'm gonna have a crack now at putting the seals in with a little bit of bearing grease and some hammering using these tools. Hopefully I can remember what I saw. And then I'll have a crack at the next one, pulling the bearings out and repeating the process. And then it should be in my memory by then. All right, wish me luck. Make sure the ceiling surface is fine. So I can get a nice seal on there. Now I'm in the main workshop, which I normally obviously don't work in because uh, it's now past 5 p.m. So they've all gone home. So I have access to this nice big heavy duty vice. So I need to work out something to do with a, a workbench. I might have to go online and see if I can find a secondhand wooden workbench with a vice. That would be really good because some of the stuff I just can't do without. All right, this Timken bearing. Now, some of you will know that Sweden is absolutely famous for their bearings. In fact, there's a little bit of controversy around uh, Sweden's uh, neutral involvement in World War II in that they, uh, they basically, they kind of kept, I guess, both uh, Allied and Axis uh, running their military operations with all of their bearings, but you know some historians have argued that if they had stopped selling to uh, Germany, that the war would have ended much sooner. But I'm sure that's hearsay. So I mean, if anyone knows more about World War II history than I do, chime in. Let me know what you think about that bearing. Uh, controversy I guess you could call it but anyway Sweden makes amazing bearings they're known for it but for some reason these ones are a made in USA Timken bearing very interesting first part of the install I'm nervous well I think I could have done a better job than that. My first mistake already. It's got to go in nice and level, which it wasn't, so. Back one side out, turn her around. Now we're nice and level. Part of the way there. You know what? This feels pretty darn good being able to finally get these done. So that's one of the wear rings. So the bearing turn on that. So that's got to be a nice smooth edge and it's not supposed to move. So that's why it's being driven home quite hard so it just really locks into place there and then you've got these two spots here that enable you to get that punch in from either side and either get it in or get it out so it's been machined really nicely then we have the actual seal ring you could call it this guy here now this is where one of these tools comes in handy so there's a rubber lip on this that can't be damaged because it's part of the sealing surface so this fits into that really nicely, perfectly over the edge. And then this guy sits on top and I hit home this one here.
this may work better in a press. I think sustained pressure is going to be better for this. Not liking how that's feeling. Never mind. Let's try the other side. Let's go back to my workshop and use the press. <laughs> Today has been a long day. Today's been a really long day. <laughs> it is almost 8 o'clock. It's almost 8 p.m. Started here at 9. I've completed one portal seal and like three quarter completed two more. So I'm really stoked. I'm actually, I'm getting places. Hey. So that's awesome. <laughs> and the team has come yeah. to pick up the worker. I missed my team. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit uh, past his bedtime, but unfortunately Sorry, in Sweden, we are having a lot of trouble with Amazon. So Amazon is using, I guess, a carrier that delivers only from 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. So that makes the delivery at the workshop very hard because obviously Chris has to stay very late. I went to the shops. I grabbed some snacks. Two and a half hours actually. Chris hasn't had dinner, he's worked so hard the whole day, I felt very bad that I'm starving. I've been in uh, the nice Airbnb. Alright, almost uh, almost going back home. Hopefully. Fortunately, we have a baby proof this baby yet. But you can roll around and get dirty around now. <laughs> Happy boy. One of the puzzles that we're actually waiting for is of this play end that we made it up here. And I've already got 100 balls at this current obsession. You love Look at me! You did so good not throwing it. Good job. I'll keep him busy when we do some work downstairs, that's for sure. <laughs> You've got 90 to go. <laughs> Hey, good morning. Man, that was a, uh, a late night last night, but that's all good. Now, I have one officially complete. I am very, very chuffed with this. It may not look like a lot, but this is a really big step for me in my mechanical career <laughs> on this vehicle. So we have got the brand new seal in here, set really nicely, and then we have got the wear ring on top. And then on the other side, we have got the wear ring mated down to that surface with the rubber all intact. So all I need to really do is clean this all up, which in retrospect, I should have done before I started the seal business, but never mind. Now I'm working on two others that are about half finished. I definitely got the wrong end of the stick with the hammering and the seal. It definitely has to be pressed in. Especially this top one, it takes so much force on this pipe that I'm cranking down on that five ton jack to get it to sit in properly. To be fair, it's probably not helpful having soft wood as my support. That doesn't help a whole lot, but never mind. <laughs> it is what it is. So soon I'll have three complete. Then I've got a fourth that I can work on today. Plus I've got some cleaning to do, potentially some painting. And then I have the two rear wheels and the CV boot to do and the majority of the work is done on the hubs. You guys are probably already sick of seeing this stuff on the hubs, but it's a really big deal to me. It also gives me some confidence to be able to tackle uh, the front hubs on Bowser when I get back, which is like this, but on like a five times larger, heavier scale. So yeah, the Unimog's no joke when it comes to those front portals. But this should hopefully be the dirtiest messiest, grossest job of the entire build. And the other cool thing is, check this out. New addition to the workshop. This is 
a military generator. So from what Bjorn has told me, this is actually set up with filters and stuff so that it gives clean oxygen. So he, he was saying that you could dive with this unit supplying oxygen to divers or anything along those lines, firing it into one of those humidically sealed tents. Yeah, so, so that's a really cool machine. And it's nice and quiet once the lid of the box is on, but I have taken the box to be my painting table. Because I was getting a bit sick of doing all the painting on my knees on the cold floor. So that at least gives me a little bit of elevation, which is nice. So yeah, very cool because I've bought this ear hose from Biltimer and that may enable me to try some soda blasting, which I'll show you. I haven't tried that yet and air gun. Time to get cracking with these seals. Okay, my third one done. Beautiful. Yes. Three down, three to go. Woo -hoo! So lots going on slowly. So we've got the three fixed ones here. Outside I've just been cleaning all the spindles. So they're getting a good treatment of the oven cleaner and a wire brush and some high pressure water. So got a bit of an assembly line. Those two will need to be cleaned up and painted. These have been painted. The drum brakes are now complete. This is for the next front one, which will be coming up next. Obviously the two rears. Uh, these drums are coming up pretty nice. I've polished the inside as well. Hopefully, fingers crossed, those drums will fit in there nicely and they won't jam up. Now I need to remove the CV boot from this next one. So I'm basically using cold chisel that I brought from Australia and it is proving so useful. It's such a good tool to have in the arsenal. It's just one decent cold chisel. So because there's a metal ring on this boot, I basically just need to uh, pry it out. So I've gotten out a lot of the way. Yeah, there we go. Might set that up to happen. <laughs> okay. And there it is there. And that brass ring needs to go into the new one. So that's pretty good. Wasn't in real bad shape. But it was definitely, yeah, definitely starting to rip even more. And you've got that big hole there where you can see my finger. So that's why this was so filthy. The oil was escaping and just covering this portal. CV joint looks really good. So no issues with that, so that's great news because that would have been much more expensive than the seals I've already got. So I need to hammer this out now, which I'll show you with a plastic hammer. Just give it a whole bunch of doof doofs and it'll come out. Technically, 
If I could leave it in, just wrap it, because I'm not actually doing anything in the CV joint, but it's going to be painful. Because as you can see, the weight is in the shaft. Chris is always hard working and doesn't stop. So as you can see, I could not get the shaft out of it. I even whacked it with a piece of wood as hard as I could like a hundred times. Couldn't get it out, so this is my solution. So I'm trying to avoid uh, too much crap getting into the CV. If I'd known retrospectively that I couldn't get the shaft out, I would have left the old boot on and then I could have just taped it up and it would have been a bit more waterproof. So it's just gonna take me longer. I'm using a wipe and a brush and I'm not actually gonna spray this with water. So this one will take a while. That's all right. It's the last, uh, it's the second front one. So I don't have to do one of these again. I must admit when I see jobs like this, I feel very guilty of what my morning look like, which at the moment, these past days, it's been a little bit the same, so I'm going to get some little bits and pieces to the shop for Chris. So this morning I went to Biltema. We need to describe to you Biltema, because Biltema is the most amazing shop that we have ever encountered, which is a mix for Australian people watching of Super Chipotle, Kmart, BCF, Burning, Anaconda, Anaconda, like this everything you need total tools like it's everything it's, and there's a cafe it is a cafe it's the perfect shop so we've been there already i don't know i've got so many receipts definitely the best shop that we've um, been so far so i went there when i arrived visually oakley is asleep in the car so luckily i always bring my laptop with me i do a bit of editing in the car while he naps then we do the chores went to ikea as well pick up a few more things Went to the mall this morning just so that I could play at the playground. And here I am dropping some things to Chris yeah. and going back to the Airbnb. And Chris today is potentially going to see a car for us to buy. Yes. Fingers crossed, another yeah. thing to tick up the list. I literally just needed to use a puller that size just to pull that hub off. I've been whacking at it, using two hammers to try and pry at it for easily 20 minutes and I finally got it off with that. So we are down to our second to last wheel as you can see. I've got a little painted production line going on. Four drum brakes are done. We've got the two fronts. This one's drying. Then we've got two of the rears drying as well. So lots of slow uh, brush painting today with the Brantho Corox, the three in one. So far I really like the paint. It's a bit glossier than I realized, but that's okay. But yeah, it seems to stick really well. And soon we're gonna be on the home stretch of this hub situation, which I'm sure you are sick of it by now. You can imagine how sick of it I am going on the end of the second week of non-stop work on this stuff. Finally some sunshine in Sweden, but like every day, Chris is working. No days off for him so far. <laughs> it's been another big week. Yes, yeah, another really big week. Where are we? Inch, you can see the line up here. Very happy with how things have gone so far. Looks Everything painted. Looks like new. So all of those brakes are done. Almost finished the two in the back, the drum brakes. This is the last two portal housings that I've pulled off this rear left. So I need to clean those today and inspect and then paint. Got some bad news. The last portal that I pulled apart, the bearing is toast. 
don't know if you can see that in the camera. Let's put that little light on. So you can see all the pitting. Mm. So if you bring it down here, Ange, that was on this guy here, that's the bearing. And it has also toasted all of these rollers. So I need to work out how to pull this off. I think I might use a multi-tool to cut this off here and be really, really careful to not nick the shaft. We've ordered another uh, bearings. Anyway, that was bad news. So far, all the other bearings have been really top-notch. It's just been the seals that I've been replacing. And the other thing I'm not happy with is, in retrospect, I should have packed the CVs of grease and I haven't. I told myself there was a grease nipple for some reason, which is stupidity on my behalf. So I think I'm actually going to pull the boots off and dump a bunch of bearing grease in there. If I can't salvage the boots, I'm gonna order two more from Malaysia because it's gonna haunt me otherwise knowing that these CVs could be running dry. And I don't wanna ruin the CVs because they seem good. So that's where I'm at so far. Yeah, I'm really happy with how things are going. I reckon, yeah, we're making good progress. It's just been a lot more work than I anticipated. So we decided that tomorrow we will be taking the day off. I mean, Chris will be taking the day off because it's another um, nice day. No, you need okay. to. I think you need to get uh, worker satisfaction and productivity eye. We need to take at least the day off the workshop. We may still have to do some chores, unfortunately. Get settled into our little uh, vintage motorhome. Oh, you should quickly show the car we bought as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So uh, we are the proud owner of a Saab 93. Saab uh, 93 Vector Sport. It's a nice car. Two litre turbo. It goes. It's good. <laughs> it's alright. Pulled off a very dodgy character about an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, that was not great. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a good feeling. We drop off the rental. So yes, yeah, stay tuned for that next week. Thank you so much for watching the build. Any feedback on what you would like to see more of. We will show you on the next video a bit more of the surroundings of Malmo. It's just we haven't had good weather and we haven't really taken a day off. So no, we yeah, haven't. Yeah, we, we will we... show you a bit more of that. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the build series so far. Thank you. Bye-bye.